what's up guys and welcome to a new tutorial in this short video i'm going to discuss about post processing so i'm going to show the general things and answer some of the questions that have been asked a lot so first i click on this and i click here to play the animation here is the increment if i want to skip any number of states i can uh, put here meaning now you can see this is the first state then i go to second third fourth but if i put let's say here 10 then it will jump in tens and i think you get the idea and also here i can control the first and the last state let's say i want to i want to play only half of the results so i put here 50 so here can all I can only see half of the results it's going very fast so if you want to make it slower you can control here and also you can put here one which is the original number of the increments so now the animation is smoother but if you want still you want to make it slower you can click here and between each of the states it will become slower and slower okay this is very basic and I think everyone knows it now the next thing is the setting options here. We have the general setting and we have the post setting. So I'm going to discuss post setting because we are doing the post processing. This is the displacement factor. If your displacement is small or big and you want to change that, you can scale with this factor. Let's say if I put one, then nothing will happen. If I put let's say 0 0.1 and then apply, you can see it the displacement becomes smaller. If say I put 5, then it will be 5 times. See, things are becoming crazy. And of course we can control in the three directions. Let's say I click on reset, then I want to multiply the displacement by a factor of 5 only in the Z direction. Okay, so this is too big, that's why things become very ugly. So this is the scaling factor next is reflection for this option you use it if you are modeling half or quarter of the problem okay let's say i click here to hide the mesh now here let's say i want the reflect about this plane z y and x z and then apply now you can see the quarter model become full model let's say i reset and then i click on x z plane only then it will become like this. It will become from quarter model to half model. Okay, clear. Reset, sorry. Now done. We go to here. This is the contours. You can see here is the X stress, the, the Z stress. Here is the strain. And here is the displacement. Okay, let's uh, click on any one of them. Let's say this one. And then we play the animation make it faster okay i want to show the mesh i click here okay i stop now at the last stage then i will zoom in to show a few things which is this french range okay uh, maybe it's different than what you see right now here i have so many of them maybe you have five or ten how to control uh, how many of these here uh, you can control that from here let's say this is 30 meaning here is 30 and i and i think that's the maximum if you put 6 it will, it will become only 6 if you put 10 and if you put 20 and as you can see the more i have here the more smooth will be the transition between one color and another color so if i put 30 it will be smooth and if I put 6, you can see it's very rough. Okay, if you want to reverse from blue to red here, let's say you like the blue or you don't like the blue, then you can click here. The maximum and the minimum will be reversed. Okay, now the next thing is here, the user defined. This one, if you want to control the limit of the maximum and the minimum. Okay, so right now it's dynamic, meaning this one will increase and increase and increase so if you want to fix them you click on this static now you can see 
they are fixed the maximum and the minimum will be fixed where it was before this so now it will be fixed but if you want to control the range more than that you can go here user here you can put any numbers that you want to choose this is very useful if you have two parts and you are interested only in the results in one of them i cannot show it in this example because in this example i have this intender is rigid so it doesn't have any press or anything but let's say i have this one is steel and this one is aluminium so the stress in the aluminium will be higher so to control the range of the plot i can use this option okay put 30 i put 20. okay next now is the history so here you can get the results of the global the overall here by each part and here the result of each node and here the result of each element and let's say i want to find the nodal and then i want to find the displacement of this node so i click there and i click on that on this z displacement and then i plot and here i have the displacement okay next let's say i want to put the plot here so i click on this one click on main and then click on new and you can see the plot is already here you can control the size and you can also move it left right up and down and this one you can control you can change the axis and stuff like that from here you have this one this is the curve this is the attribute you want to change the color this is the operation you want to differentiate integrate filters if the results are noisy you can use the filter this part let's say if you want to have the timeline you can click here if you want to invert the background it will become black and uh, okay maximum here it will maximize the area of the graph and this one min max it will show you the maximum and the minimum value okay so enough with that i close this one all right here i skip this one first then i go to sq option the results that you can see here are not by default meaning you need to put some keywords in the k file to request for this output otherwise they will not be available like this one matsum material summary it doesn't have any small star here that means it's not available okay so here i have the global statistic or the global data uh, here you have the kinetic energy here you have the uh, internal energy like the one i showed you before but here let's say i have more options like hourglass and I have external work sliding energy and more options compared to this global here so that's the first difference uh, here i have less options here i have more options and here also i need to put some keywords in the database sq option before i run the file if i want these results okay so here let's say i go to rc force and then i load so rc force is the reaction force and here i have this intender and this specimen and uh, i have only one contact so if i have one contact i will have two forces one force is from this guy to this guy and the other one is from this guy to this guy it depends which one is your master and which one is your slave so sl is the slave ma is the master which you define in the contact card here i think i put the intender as slave and the master is the specimen because my practice is the part that is moving is a slave in the part that is stationary is the master so in this case this intender is the slave because it's moving so if i plot the force from this slave the z force can plot here you can see the force is negative why because it's going down and then if you plot this one you can see the force is positive because it's trying to resist this guy the this specimen is fixed the bottom so it cannot go anywhere and if you 
click both of them you can see they are the actually the reflections of each other okay there is one more difference between the results from ST options and the result of the history here the intervals of the results in the ST option it depends on the DT value that you put in ST options while the results that you find from history option depends on the time interval that you put in the D3 plot so if you have the D3 plot only five states then the curve or the the graphs that you will find from here it will be only five points okay so I will plot this Z first and then I click on save this is how to save the file you save as single x-axis so this is force I close this one now I go to history and then I click on any uh, of the nodes here I click let's say nodal and then this one and then the displacement in Z then plot here okay the results are negative so here let's say I save or I want to flip this one first so I go to operate and then I invert in Y then apply so now it's positive I go to save and then this is displacement and then save okay now if I go to the XY plot option here I will find the files that I've saved okay so let's say I click this one click this one and then plot that's one of the functions of the XY plot is to plot the files that you have saved and the other function is this one cross cross meaning if you want to take the Y axis from two different plots and then combine them in one plot let's say here X is my displacement so this one and the Y is the force so this one now let's see if I plot now I have this plot okay this is the force and this is the displacement okay this is important because like what I did here the displacement is taken from history and the force is taken from the ASCII options that means their intervals are not necessarily the same so if the intervals are not the same it's a bit difficult to combine them with Excel so I have the results here I open the file that I've just saved which is this one and then this one so this is the displacement result okay and the displacement result I have only 104 and if you minus these two meaning I have only 102 data points here 102 actually follows the number of the output in the D3 plot but if I go and see the force the force will have only 33 the force data points are only 33 and 33 if you minus 2 it will be 31 why I have 31 because it depends on the interval that I define in the ASCII options however the good practice is to put a big D3 plot so the displacement will be very rough and the ASCII option I put a very small number so I have a smoother curve using this ASCII options why I prefer this method because if the value in the D3 plot is very small, my D3 plot files will be very large and that will take more storage space. Okay, now I have one more thing to discuss about these two guys, but I'll keep that at the end. Here I have follow and here I have trace. Trace if I have one point and I want to see where it travels. So you can see here I click on this node and if I click on zero again from the start you can see the travel path of that node if I click here you see you can see this node was here and then at the end it moved there and then the next option is the follow option the follow option is like uh, it will fix everything else and it will follow only one point so if I apply here and then I click here you can see now this guy is moving up because I click on this point and I use the follow option so now everything will follow this point so now I click on stop here and then reset click 
clear. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is this vector. Okay, you can show a few things here. Let's say here I want to show you the displacement. And then I click on apply. So now you can see here is the displacement. And you can see now we have two things. The one on the right is the fringe, which is the strain, I think, or the stress. And the one on the left is actually the vector. So let's say I click on this one. So the stress has disappeared. Now we are showing only the vector. And this is the vector of the total displacement. And uh, let's say this one is the velocity apply. And also I can control the scale factor. Let's say I click here on edge. I will only show the edge and you can see here the flow. And let's say I make it this. You can see it's more clear now. Okay. I close this one. I close this one also. I will show this guy, this guy, and I show the mesh. Okay. Now the last thing I want to show here is how to plot the results along a path. Let's say I have this one now here, right? And this is the displacement. And I want the displacement or the strain or whatever along this line. Okay. As far as I know, you need to use Excel. There is no direct way to use the pre-post. If you know the direct way of doing that, you can share in the comment section and uh, maybe I can make a video about it and share it with everybody else. So I want the final state like this along this line. So what should I do? I need to take out the results first and then I will use the Excel. So how to do that? First, I click on history. Now, let's say I want to find the displacement. So I go here and then I click on by edge and then click on propagate. Then I increase the angle. Then I click here. Now it will select all, it will select all the nodes on along this path. Then I click on plot. I have so many things here is okay. It might sound uh, messy and scary, but Excel will take care of it. Now save this one. I will say displacement all, or let's say I say displacement profile, and then save done. The next thing is to plot the coordinate. So here I say the Y coordinate because this point along the Y. So I plot again. They are just almost straight lines, okay? So save here, I will say coordinate Y. Now save. Okay, now I open here. I open the two files that I've saved just now. So I have this one, so many things, and I have this one. Okay, so this is the coordinate. The coordinate, I need only the original point, okay? So I click here and control and then click on right. Then copy. And then I put in a different file or different location. Now I paste. Then I transpose. Where is that guy? Here, transpose. Okay. This is the Y coordinate of the first node, the second node, third node. Now I go to this file. And then I go to the last state. Because I want the residual deflection. And then I do the same thing. Control, shift, and then right. And then copy. Then I go to this file. And then here I control, B, paste. And again, I transpose. Okay, so now we have it. This is the coordinate. You see, I call it length. And here is the displacement or deflection, whatever you want to call it. And then I highlight these two guys and then insert whatever type I want. Just this one. And then here you go, you have it. The dots are too much, so I just change the type and remove the dots. So this is how you extract the results around the line. Here I showed the displacement. You can do with other things like the velocity or the stress or whatever it is. But the concept is the same. So that's all for this post-processing tutorial. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.